Funding provided by... You work hard to feed them well. That's why at Fairway, we're committed to our foundation of personalized service while treating our customers like family and valuing our employees. Fairway Meat and Grocery, that's what we're all about. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Small businesses are the backbone of Iowa's communities, and they are backed by Iowa banks. With advice, loans, and financial services, banks across Iowa are committed to showing small businesses the way to a stronger tomorrow. Learn more at iowabankers.com. is setting in Des Moines, but earlier today we had full blue skies from everywhere you looked at it. You could see either the Golden Dome or Wells Fargo Arena if you were heading through on I-235. And you're looking at that arena going, I wonder if this is state basketball weekend. It is. And we've got one more game. It's a rematch of last year's Class 1A championship. This year, Newell Fonda is number two and Bishop Garrigan is number one alongside Laura Leonard. I'm Paul Yeager. Glad to have you here on Championship Saturday, the night we wear pink, by the way. Laura, this one is the third time these two teams have played in a year, and it's split. So what about that third game? You think it's going to be a big deal or anything? Uh, kind of a big deal. I think with everything on the line, it's a huge deal. And so it's the rubber game of the match between these two teams. And it's going to be a high-scoring affair, I feel. It's going to be up and down, and we're going to see a lot of points scored. Newell Fonda is your road team. They are the two-time defending champions. They return four starters from last year. It's the same script, potent offense, lots of steals, similar names. You've said Seavers and Bailey for years, Laura. And Coach Jungers feels like this team is a little deeper than last year, oh, so that makes them even more scary. And then for Bishop Garrigan, similar names as well. They are on their third trip in four years. Two familiar names, Audie Crooks. If you don't know who she is, I know many of you caught it last year. Molly Joyce in the same class. It's super sophomores. They are an amazing duo to watch. And yeah, if you don't know those names by now, you will after tonight's state tournament. Let's meet uh, this year's winner of the uh, Bankers, Iowa Bankers Scholarship. And this year at the Girls State Basketball Tournament, the Iowa Bankers Association presents the Student Athlete Achievement Award to a student athlete who excels on the court, in the classroom, and in her community. The recipient receives a $1,000 scholarship to the college of her choice. The 2021 Student Athlete Achievement Award winner is Ellie Luggo from Newell Fonda High School. Presenting the 2021 award is Damon Miller from Central Bank Storm Lake. Congratulations to Ellie Luggo and thank you to Damon Miller with Central Bank Storm Lake and the Iowa Bankers Association for their sponsorship of this award and continued support of the IGHSAU. Fans.
cards. It's now time to introduce the players in tonight's championship matchup. First, the non-starters for Newell Fonda. Number five, Anna Belcock. Number 11, Mary Walker. Number 23, McKenna Sievers. Number 25, Nevea Lyman. Number 33, Lainey Hograve. Number 35, Kira Jungers. Number 43, Isabel Bartek. Number 51, Audrey Kosky. Number 53, Paige Roberts. And number 55, Emma Erickson. The assistant coaches for Newell Fonda are Courtney Darrow, Jordan Myers, and Kevin Larson. And now let's meet the non-starters for Algona Bishop Garrigan. Number two, Emma Granjanet. Number three, Anna Berkey. Number four, Tracy Rosenmeyer. Number 12, Kelly Beatty. Number 20, Regan Murphy. Number 21, Abby Capacious. Number 23, Meredith Tigges. Number 20, Ashlyn Hovey. Number 32, Ella Muller. And number 34, Kaylin Capacious. The assistant coaches for Bishop Garrigan are Mick Elbert and Joe Bartolo. Junior number 21, Macy Sievers. And for Bishop Garrigan, a 5'10 senior number 14, Kaylin Myers. For Newell Fonda, 5'8 senior number 31, Maggie Walker. And for Bishop Garrigan, a 5'7 senior number 22, Gracie Ellsbecker. For Newell Fonda, 5'9", senior number 41, Ella Larson. And for Bishop Garrigan, a 5'8", senior number 24, Reese Rosenmeyer. For Newell Fonda, 5'8", senior number 45, Ellie Lago. And for Bishop Garrigan, a 6'3", sophomore, number 55, Audie Crooks. The head coach for Newell Fonda is Dick Jungers. And the head coach for Bishop Garrigan is Brandon Schwab. Tonight's floor officials are Chris Ehlers, Sean Collins, Todd Sadler, and the bench official is Bob Squire. Welcome Newell Fonda and Bishop Garrigan to the 2021 Class 1A Championship Game. We have two 25 and one teams. Newell Fonda, Laura Leonard, what are their keys to the game? Defense to offense. You will see their swarming defense all over the floor. They are going to turn it into points. They average a ton of points and they get most of them off of those defensive steals. And C4, if you get trapped somewhere, look for your teammates. See the other four on the floor. Don't get trapped, don't turn it over. And for Garrigan. Offensive rebounds, they need to go to the offensive glass, give themselves extra possessions, and funnel the dribble drive to the middle where Audie Crooks is, and she can alter shots. Larson and Crooks at the center circle, and it goes out of bounds in favor of Garrigan, and they'll have it here initially. But now it's Newell Fonda. Brandon Schwab gets the explanation, so the Mustangs. We'll start with the basketball. 
And they're showing zone, 2-3 zone. And you know you can gamble out on the perimeter on the wings because you have Audie Crooks in the middle who can alter shots when you try to go inside. Macy Seaver's three-point basket is off the mark and already Newell Fonda playing that pressure defense and it forces a turnover as Molly Joyce dribbles it out of bounds. Immediately the pressure comes from Newell Fonda on the outlet pass and Joyce did a good job to get by it initially, but then a second wave comes and pushes her to the sidelines. No score early on. Both teams have had an offensive possession, but not very much of one for Garrigan yet. Newell Fonda kicks it in, and who is in the middle of the paint but Audie Crooks? Trying to thread that needle down low and just way too many arms and legs to try to get that pass through. Mustangs inbound it, pulling the trigger and hitting the three is... Maggie Walker breaking the ice. Look how far back they push Joyce and make her have to work really hard to get it up and then retreat defensively, filling the gap, filling the lane. And a foul is called as Larson had stepped in front of it. What's that old uh, defensive uh, ball you man? Is that what happened right there? Or was that more of a just jumping the passing lane defensive moment? That was just a, a getting back in defensive position and filling a spot and, and, try, and then understanding and seeing where you need to be after that. So you want to pack it in in the middle and then work your way out and pick somebody else up. Into the corner. Stuck with it is Legault, and getting the steal is Myers. You know, you think you have a little breathing room once you get it past the first two defenders, and then there's another two waiting for you. Doesn't work for Crooks, and that one's too hard off the glass. I was going to ask you in the open about the over-under on this one. 111 combined points the first time early on. Both these teams just... I think there's butter on the basketball. Crooks collects and will get one more. That one just rolls over to Crooks and she just picks it up and says, you know what, I'm going to take matters in my own hands, going up strong and drew the contact and here comes the line change and this is what we're going to become accustomed to here in this ball game. As you say, there is a little butter on the ball and it's a slippery ball tonight here to start this game, but Audie Crooks right there to pick it up. Crooks doesn't miss many passes to her or rebounds near her. But she does misfire on that free throw. Jungers. Larson back with the basketball. That's Walker. Out for a moment on that three perimeter. Not real good looks in the paint so far. Good defense keeping it on the outside. Pulling it, shooting it is Larson and it's short, but yet Newell Fonda there for the rebound. Walker able to grab that ball and kick it back out. And another offensive board. And that is something that we talked about that Garrigan needed to do is control the offensive boards. Right now, Newell Fonda is doing a great job on the offensive glass. Three opportunities, and they finally knock one down. Kira Jungers with the, the bunny. That is the daughter of head coach Dick Jungers, and there is a steal for the Mustangs. Two on one drill. The left-handed put up by Mary Walker is good. Walker, the rare uh, bench player who's had double-figure points in each of the first two games. Well, as I said, they feel like they're a little bit deeper than they have been in the last couple of years, so I'm not sure it matters who they have on the floor. Into the corner three, Ellsbecker. Good! Gracie connects. And once they were able to get through the, the pressure, they were able to get set and kick out to a shooter. Turnaround shot, good. Jungers again. 9-5, Newell Fonda. Three minutes, now four minutes gone by, and a whistle 
Timeout, Bishop Garrigan. They were getting close on that 10 second count. Here's how the two teams got here. It was a little bit of a struggle for Bishop Garrigan in the opening game against Springville, but they were able to knock out the familiar tournament team, Springville. Exira EHK with their eight player lineup was able to knock off MMCRU, then Newell Fonda sent Kingsley Pearson home. St. Ansgar lost to Montezuma, and then Newell Fonda over Monty yesterday afternoon, and Garrigan earlier in the day knocked out Exira EHK. So, Garrigan down four early on. These two teams, Laura, played back on December 10th. And in that contest, uh, it was really a lot of Bishop Garrigan. Coach Junger said, hey, we just didn't hit a lot of layups, a lot of good shots, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Well, and you look at uh, when they played, so as you said, back on December 12th, that gives you a lot of time to make some adjustments and get better as the season wears on. And I think they just learn each and every time they're out on the floor as a unit how to play together defensively. So that was a good test game early. And then Bishop Garrigan goes and comes on one of the coldest nights of 2021 to Valley High School in West Des Moines to play a game to get them ready to more, more speed. Three from the right side, no good for Berkey. And Newell Fonda pushes tempo. Junger's foul, uh, shot is off the mark. And then a foul as Crooks had the rebound. Junger's whistled, I believe. I think you're right. And the shot goes up, and you can see Crooks pull it. She's looking for an outlet. Brought it down. And from the backside, they come to try it up, tie it up, but get called for the foul. Molly Joyce is on the out of bounds line. She's pushed. Okay, so initially I thought maybe Coach Schwab was saying don't dribble out of bounds. He thinks she was pushed there. You know, Newell Fonda has a tendency, they play so close and they play so tight defensively. A little bump here or there might help usher somebody to the sideline. Bailey Seavers the tray. 12-5 Mustangs. Back door, they go to Crooks. She dribbles and misses. A lot of blue around her. Out ahead are the Mustangs, and the layup is good. Mary Walker. They get the rebound, the run out. And Bishop Garrigan tried to inbound the ball quickly to push tempo so they wouldn't let that defense get set. But it is just a natural reaction for the Mustangs to, once they see the ball go through the hoop, they turn around and start playing defense. So is the tempo favoring Newell Fonda right now? I think it is. I think this is their game. This is what they want to do. They want to speed you up. They want to pressure all over the court and get the steals and get the easy layups like we just saw in that last possession. Kaylin Myers, one of the girls who's been with Garrigan in their three state trips in their last four years. The senior misses that shot and it's gonna go off of Newell Fonda. It'll stay Garrigan basketball. And I think you have to see Bishop Garrigan hit some perimeter shots to open things up in the middle so they can try to enter the ball into Crooks. Almost a minute and a half since Bishop Garrigan's last field goal. That's an eternity when you're playing Newell Fonda. The layup runner no good for Joyce. And then it ends up going off Berkey out of bounds. It'll stay with Newell Fonda. Interior, now the cutting. Somehow getting that shot off was Macy Seavers, and she's gonna go in. Now this time it's Bailey Seavers. Audie Crooks picks up the foul. She's gonna get a look at the passing and the eyes up surveying the floor, looking for your teammate and making sure that you can deliver that pass to them where they can shoot it. First free throw is good for Bailey Seavers. 13 against Kingsley Pearson, 15 against Montezuma, and she now has five. 
More pressure, and it turns to a steal. Shot up, no good. Again, the follow runners. Third attempt coming. Finally, Garrigan gets rid of it in that corner. Berkey with the basketball. But they're going the wrong way. Crooks at the top of the press break. Three coming from Myers, well short. And that defense forced him into that shot. They didn't want to go any further. They felt like that was their best option available. Another two for Bailey Seavers. Into Crooks, back door, layup good. And the fir or four, now four points for Crooks. And if you can do that and that kind of sequence where they pass the ball over the top of the zone, and then you put it in a place where Crooks is the only person that can get it, they will score all night. Three, no good by Legault, and Crooks the rebound. Crooks coming into this game had 28 rebounds in the tournament. Transition shot, no good for Joyce. Man, Garrigan's just not getting second attempts. No, they really aren't, and uh, they're having a hard time getting back down there to get set. They're taking quick shots, and so the rest of the team is not getting down to get in rebounding position. High up right there in the near court. Last year in the title game, Laura, Garrigan was up three and a half. They extended that lead to 16 before Newell Fonda kind of pecked away. So this year, Newell Fonda with the early lead. We'll see how Bishop Garrigan pecks away. Wide open on the uh, over-the-top defense pass to Abby Capacious, and there's a foul on Newell Fonda. Laney Holgrave whistled. Tried to go over the top. They're making some difficult passes, and they're getting the looks, but they just are not getting anything to fall. They do get that free throw to fall, but boy, it took every part of that cylinder for Capacious. And Newell Fonda has doubled up as far as field goal attempts. He had 18 attempts, and Bishop Garrigan only nine. Crashing the boards is Ella Larson, the senior. Ella undecided on her college plans. She knows she wants to. Kind of seeing what comes her way for opportunities as a little denial by the Golden Bear defense keeps it away from gear, uh, Newell Fonda from getting a bucket. Inside Crooks, over the defense, good denial. Larson, comeback and put back for the Golden Bears. That's Abby Capacious. Defense in front and behind Crooks goes off her fingertips and goes right to Capacious. Garrigan back within eight. Final seconds of the quarter. Mustang's got to shoot it. Two seconds, one. Larson at the buzzer, no good. Newell Fonda had a big lead, but it's back down to eight. 18-8 after one quarter in the 1A championship game. At PBS, we know that helping students learn is a teacher's top priority. Find the content you need to enhance lessons and help spark your students' sense of curiosity at PBS Learning Media. Inspire kids with Young Explorers. Examine women's suffrage with Carrie Chapman Catt. Uncover Iowa's vast diversity with Iowa Land and Sky and go behind the scenes with Iowa PBS performances. Find more Iowa educational collections at iowa.pbslearningmedia.org. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Newell Fonda averaging 80 points a game. They're a little behind that pace, Laura. Bishop Garrigan averaging 52 points a game. 
A little more behind. 18-10 as we begin quarter number two. I asked you about tempo just a couple of minutes ago. Garrigan's got to figure out a way to slow things down or just figure out how to get Crooks the ball, it seems like, every time. <laughs> well, if they can, they're doing a good job of positioning themselves, Newell Fonda is, uh, right around Crooks on the front and the back. And so they have got to hit some shots from the outside to open it up on the inside. There, Molly Joyce pulled a Newell Fonda and got her hand in the passing lane and disrupted things. And frankly, it just can't be the Audie Crook show. And it's not just that show for Bishop Garrigan. You got Molly Joyce in 18 points a game. And Kaylin Myers with 10. Balanced teams do well down here. Macy Seavers, the six footer. And again, some pressure. Garrigan gets the baseball pass down all the way. On the other end, but missing the shot is Rosenmeyer. And it is a held ball. Well, what Bishop Garrigan is doing is trying to throw over the top of that defense. They've had the opportunities. You gotta get and you gotta finish all the way through that layup. Newell Fonda by 10, 2010, 7.06, turn around, shot. Jungers, good. Jungers having a nice first half, and the defense did not come out and contest that shot. Into Crooks, high off the glass. Good. Audie now with six. Up ahead, quickly go the Mustangs, tipped away into the arms of the Bears. Cross court pass. And before. Molly Joyce can get a shot off. She's fouled by Macy Sievers. Molly Joyce this year, a sophomore. Her and Audie Crooks, teammates on their AAU team, and they're, the team that they play when they come from Algona is in Des Moines, and it plays off Hubble Avenue, not too terribly far away from Wells Fargo Arena, so maybe on occasion they might make a little detour and just Make sure they see the arena and know we want to get back here. Just check things out. And with this duo, and Crooks wasn't ready for that pass. And it's going to go off Newell Fonda and out of bounds. But with this duo and this lineup for Bishop Garrigan, they certainly will be here for a few more years. Paige Roberts has the ball go off of her. You need almost a full roster lineup to keep up with Lua Fonda and all of the players they rotate through. I think coming into the tournament, Coach said everybody who's got a varsity jersey but two had played in every game. Yeah, I, and, and that goes to the depth. I mean, he's got players upon players, so it doesn't matter if you start or you're in the next wave or you're in the third wave. You're going to log some minutes for this Mustang team. Lua Fonda by 10, but when you're out on the court, you have got to go. There's no... If you're, you've got your hands on your shorts, you're not going to be in the game much longer. Audie gets the uh, ricochet and puts it in the basket. She does a good job of, of continuing to move her feet, doesn't stand around, and has been able to pick up a couple of loose balls and convert them. Bailey Seavers with the basketball. Larson dribbles with the left. Oh, cutting Seavers. Crooks blocks it. And it goes saved for a moment to, I think this time, I don't think Joyce had come back in bounds yet before she touched it. And we have a downed player. Hitting hard there was Ellie Legault. Contact, nail. Yeah, I she lost something she's holding in her contact as she looks at her left finger. And if you were watching the earlier part of the broadcast, uh, Ellie, the winner of the Banker Scholarship, and we saw a couple of girls in the jerseys walk across over the tournament here. Yeah, it's nice to see that representation from the players that are here representing their schools and getting that award. Ellie, a senior, sharpshooter. 
And the thing about her, top in the academic section of her class. You know, I think all these young ladies do a great job in the classroom, and they're hard workers on the court, and they're hard workers with their studies as well. Audie Crooks having a conversation with one of the officials. Not many more collected as a sophomore, and I was even impressed with her as a freshman last year than Crooks. So well-spoken, with a whole lot of attention on her. Three on the way from the outside, nothing but a swish for Newell Fonda's Nevea Lyman. You just look up and down the roster and you figure that everybody on that roster is gonna be in at some point in time, so get to know the names and the numbers. <laughs> Larson with it. Seavers, back out Larson, three. Ellie's shot no good, crooks the rebound. Nice spin move. Not quite able to finish was Joyce's shot. Goes off of her. And back to Newell Fonda, 25-14, 4.33 to go here before halftime. But off the rebound, they push tempo, and they get, so that doesn't allow that defense to get set. So that's why you need to be one and done when the shot goes up for Newell Fonda. Pull the rebound so you can get your team going the other way. Oh, wide open on the backside. <laughs> Bailey Seavers. Forgot about Seavers down low. They just extended that back line of defense up a little too high. Largest lead of the game at 13. Crooks catches, fouled on the entry by Larson. Little note here, uh, coming in, all Audie Crooks needed was one block to set the record for blocks in a tournament. Back in 2014, Claudia Larson had blocked 14 shots, and now Crooks has blocked her 14th, so at least right now they're tied. Number 43, Isabel Bartek. Number 35. Well, she is a difference maker on defense in the middle, and she will make you change your shot. She will make you alter your shot when you get in too close. Nice move to the basket for Abby Capacious. Nice little ball fake and was able to get up and under the defense. Into the corner is Bartek. Now Lyman. Bartek to a cutter. Did you see that pass? They knew, Newell Fonda knew that there was a, supposed to be a cutter right there. Macy Seaver's doing at that time. They just know where each other is gonna be. Joyce's layup is no good. Well, and it's teamwork, and that's just working together and playing this system together for so long. Everybody knows what to do, what to look for, who's cutting where. And that was a situation where three defenders got caught down on the baseline going after the ball handler and cut right into the middle and you get the easy two. Macy Sievers way out front with it. Shot planks no good and the rebound comes out to Abby Capacious. That's Myers. Myers will step up from the right wing. That looked good from the hand but just a little long. Just a little too strong off the rim, but a good, clean look. Macy Seavers, and a time, we got a travel on the steal. So it was a steal, and then before we went any further, it was a travel. Garrigan to inbound. The 231 mark. Pass to Dick Junger's problem is he's wearing the same color as your jersey. He's just not in the game. He's not in the uh, official scorebook either. Noel <laughs> Fonda with five steals. Seems like 
50 steals. I'm sure if you're Bishop Garrigan, the way that they are all over the floor and all over the ball handlers. Larson to the corner. Open three, missed by Walker. If there's anything that you are positive about if you're Garrigan right now is keep letting Newell to shoot the three. That has been a little bit of a challenge for them. Yeah, if you shut things down in the middle, let them shoot the three, and then have a little patience on the offensive end to get the ball inside to that young lady, you're gonna have a nice result. And that's why, you know, analytics of take the three, not the two. If you're not hitting the three, then you can trade twos. And if you're Garrigan, you hope for the two and one, the old fashioned three point play as Crooks hits the first. Audi now at 10. Three point and following her shot, but just not getting to it was Newell Fonda's Lyman. Up ahead on the breakaway layup, no good. Boy, on both ends, missed little bunnies, and then another turnover and steal for Newell Fonda. Larson tips it away, back into the arms of her teammate. And converting is Lanny Hograve. Timeout. Algona Bishop Garrigan. Tell you what, Crooks has just been so impressive in this tournament. In her, this is her sixth tournament game. And they just go high up over the top, and you can do that sometime in 1A when not everybody is the same height as you. No, and she's got great hands, and you can see they're just with her everywhere she moves on the floor. She's calling for the ball and she continues to work and move her feet. And then she just has to battle through not only two, but three defenders. Well, she says her and Molly Joyce, they have good just eye contact on knowing when the other is open. They play so much basketball together, both in and out of a Bishop Garrigan uniform. There is some familiarity. I mean, you talk about it with Newell Fonda, they have that same setup where everybody knows where everybody's gonna be at. They do, and they just keep reloading every single year. They are the envy of many coaches uh, who have told me that, they just, man, what Coach Jungers has done over there year in and year out. This is the ninth title game Newell Fonda has been in since 1997. Nice move, Joyce. That's a, gonna get her going. She got a little frustrated after she missed that last layup but great ball handling to weave her way through the defense. Under a minute, 13 point lead for Newell Fonda. You'd say hold for one, but they might try to shoot it three times in 46 seconds. <laughs> three is blocked. And it's up ahead, layup missed by Joyce and she goes and grabs the shoes. She was frustrated thought about it a little too much. It was really wide open. They were gonna go get the easy two. And she just short-armed it, didn't go up strong. 15 seconds. They go up to Audi, stolen away by Newell Fonda. 10 seconds. Walker at the three, three seconds, two. The launch, Lyman, she won't get it off, and neither will the Mustangs any shot, but it is still a 13-point Newell Fonda lead, 33 to 20. Oof. It was a good first half for the Mustangs as they head out into the locker room. It's time to continue a tradition, and the All-Iowa Dance Team and their performance for this year's state basketball tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, the All-Iowa Honor Dance Team is making its more than 40th appearance at the Girls' State Basketball Tournament. 
515 dancers auditioned virtually this past fall. 92 Iowa high school dance teams are represented in this year's All Iowa Honor Dance Team, with 238 dancers participating in this pre recorded performance. All schools are members of the Iowa State Dance Team Association. Choreographers are Betty Baker, Andrea Dana, and Stacy Horton. The director of the All Iowa Honor Dance Team is Kathy Inyart. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy the 2021 All Iowa Honor Dance Team.
We're at halftime. Newell Fonda by 13 in the Class 1A championship. And this year, the 2021 Iowa Girls High School Basketball Championship marks one year since a global pandemic changed our daily lives. And it's been a year of perseverance for Iowa Girls as they found both community and a collective mission in the face of adversity. Here's Sievers to Morenz. And the lead in the championship for Newell Fonda. That is a comeback for the ages. What a game. As the lights went down on the 2020 Iowa girls basketball season, nobody had any idea what lay ahead. Coronavirus infections have passed the half million mark worldwide. 3.3 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits in the last week alone. Open up your trunk, thank you. With much of the country in quarantine, Iowans came to terms with a global pandemic. Decision makers were faced with difficult choices, including the executive director of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, Jean Berger. Remember, this is all new. We have no playbook. You're just operating sort of in this vacuum. Schools are shut down. Our sports are shut down. Our kids are not working with coaches. We made the decision not to have any of our spring sports. When coach had to call that meeting and say, sorry, ladies, there's no season, what was your emotion? I look back on it now and I just wish that I spent like five more minutes on the field, like just taking it all in, like taking deep breaths, like, wow, this was my last time. I definitely wish that I had just one more moment, like on the field with my best friends. The season kept getting pushed back and delayed. Pitchers and catchers knew that we couldn't be taking this time off. So we all found like open fields somewhere, wherever we could go to pitch together and catch together. By summer 2020, COVID-19 was a fact of life. The IGHSAU chose to let each district decide for themselves whether or not to participate in summer sports. A softball coach said, just tell us what we need to do and we'll do it. We'll do anything you want us to do so we can play. Uh, and they did. We are on the way to a beautiful evening in Fort Dodge. The state championship is number one goal when you're in a sport. That's everyone's goal. And so we kind of kept that in the back of our minds. Cheyenne Barron, she's a 507 hitter. Take our temperature before each practice, before each game. To deep left. Home run. How to sanitize all of our equipment. We had our own bats and our own helmets. And during games, we had to take the ball into the dugout with us instead of leaving it at the pitcher's mound. We weren't able to stay in the dorms. If we had a regular season, we would have stayed in the dorms there. And so we drove back every day, like two and a half hours every day, twice. We learned so much. So we took that into our fall championships and into volleyball especially. Keep a safe distance away, always sanitize and sanitizing balls, sanitizing hands, not sharing really any equipment at all. With all the crazy going on in the world, like we knew we had volleyball to always just play and rely on that. So we wanted to take advantage of it and that's what we were gonna do. We we're just gonna play, compete, and have fun. If this is what we have to do, especially for like the seniors like Fiona and I, this is our last chance to play. And because of these circumstances, like we're just gonna have to do what we have to do. State championship for Clarksville. Fifth times a chance. I think it is really important to note that we got cut short of some games and some practices. We had to like work on our own and do our own thing on our own to keep at it and to still improve every single day. As the seasons changed, so did case counts. With winter approaching, Iowans were reminded that nothing in 2020, least of all a schedule, is guaranteed. When you get the news that there's been a stoppage and we're going virtual, before we were able to play our first game. Then you have another stoppage for the holiday break. And we get shut down with COVID for 10 days. Having to watch other teams play, there's a perspective that you don't get 
by playing every night. And so they're glad at the opportunity to play it, even if it's to practice for one night. And so they're not taking anything for granted at this point. That research on mental health, that really struck a chord with me about what kids had been giving up. Losing something that you're that passionate about affects a lot. Honestly, for me, I kind of just didn't think about that we were in a pandemic. I was just focused in the moment because you're never going to get that back. So I didn't want to hold back any of the energy or any of that. Was giving up some hits, but the best part of it was just being able to go out there and compete and forget about what was all going on around us. We were all just like banding together to support <laughs> each other. Just being able to get out of the house and like see sports. And that smile says it all. Everyone just seemed so excited. Great work, Tyler Brinegar, on that piece. Thank you to all the girls for persevering. We ha will have the second half as Newell Fonda leads by 13. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Discover new favorites from PBS and locally produced shows from your station. Iowa PBS Performances presents another captivating triple bill from Ballet Des Moines. First, the creative and powerful In Formation, set to the music of Philip Glass and Yo-Yo Ma. Classical ballet comes to life with excerpts from Sleeping Beauty and La Corsair. And Padam Padam will delight us with the romance of post-war Paris. Join us for Acts of Resilience, Spirit. Coming to Iowa PBS, March 12th. Newell Fonda trying to repeat as champions. They're halfway home, up 13. Hello, Laura Leonard. We thought this one would be up and down. It was, but we just haven't seen all the points that I anticipated. It is up and down, and it's back and forth. It's a little sloppy, but that's what happens when you're playing Newell Fonda. <laughs> yeah. they, they make you speed up, and they make you play ugly. Yeah, Gracie Elsbecker, her three, and then uh, coming off is uh, Kara Jungers off the bench. She had five first half points, and Audie Crooks has been trying to get things going. Up ahead, uh, Molly, or that is uh, Mary Walker. Here's Molly Joyce. She's missed a couple of shots, so you know that's been on her mind as she came back out to uh, get a few more shots in before the second half begins. It's 14 of 35 shooting for field goals. That's a lot of shots, Laura, to get off. And, and that's a big thing, and that's just all because of the turnovers that they have been able to get more shots on goal, and that's just their game. Give, give us more possessions so we can score more points. And points off turnovers, huge, 13-2 in favor of the Mustangs. Yeah, and that's, they're capitalizing on it. They're turning them over, and then they're going and taking the ball right to the hoop, and they're scoring. Newell Fonda, 3 of 11 from 3 for 27%. Bishop Garrigan's only been able to get one three-pointer up that they've hit, so they're one of five. Quickly looking at points, Crooks has 10, Ellsbecker 3, Joyce 2 for Bishop Garrigan. Bailey Sievers 9, Macy Sievers 6, Mary Walker 4, Maggie Walker 3, Nevea Lyman 3, Laney Hograve 2, Kira Junger 6. <gasps> so many scoring for Newell Fonda, I have to take a big breath. Well, you, you look <laughs> at that and that's uh, 5, 6, 7, that's 12 players that have been in this ball game for Newell Fonda. That's the way they like it. That's the way they run it. Let's see what we have in store for the second half. We've had some big comebacks in this tournament. We'll see what Garrigan adjustments they've made. They get the ball first. They go over the top to Crooks. It is off of Newell Fonda. It'll stay with Audie Crooks. And you see they establish inside right away. They come in, they throw that little lob pass to her, but you get that defense collapsing in from behind, tipping the ball away. Myers with it, now up to Joyce. Joyce 
loses it, kind of got right in front of her there. I think it was Walker that got the steal. Larson, Walker, Sievers, Legault, Sievers, Joyce Myers, Ellsbecker, Rosemeyer, Crooks, the starting five back on the floor for both teams. Turnaround, eight footer, no good, and the rebound is Abby Capacious. So Capacious actually getting the start here in the second half. Sorry about that. Yeah, Capacious had five points in the first half, so she was a, a nice addition to the lineup. Crooks on the right block, turns it around. She brought that ball down, Laura. That's, that's one thing I noticed in, in the first game that we saw, the, the quarterfinal game. She has a tendency to do that occasionally, bring it down when she's looking to make that move. And that's just inviting the defense to come and clamp down on it. So, Audie, if you're watching this on the replay, that's what Laura and I see, more Laura. No, but <laughs> Audie will watch this. Last year, she watched the championship game the next morning all the way through. Where did she go the day after? Back to the gym to work out. To work on everything. And then they had a watch party last night, too, didn't they? To the watch couple the couple of the replay. players, to, they wanted to see the replay and how it turned out to see if they could flip the script. But so far, it's been a... Tough go for the Golden Bears. Joyce can't get that one. Had a good look there. Eventually, some of those shots hopefully are going to fall. Three in the corner. No for Walker. And a whistle and a foul. And it is charged to Maggie Walker, her second. Kaylin Meyer pulling that. Rebound down. We haven't heard a whole lot from her here in this ball game. She's been pretty healthy this year. Last year, not as healthy, and uh, but but playing at a different level this season. Three good from Anna Berkey. Berkey and Capacious in place of Ellsbecker and Rosenmeyer in the uh, lineup, and it's a steal by Garrigan. Here comes Molly Joyce, two on one, pulls up from three, misses, and it'll go out of bounds. Back to. Newell Fonda. But the tide turning a little bit. Defense picking up, kick out to Berkey, and she is their three-point shooter. She will stretch a defense out, so as long as she's in the game, they need to know where she is. Berkey, a senior, getting a chance to start in the second half. Coach Schwab trying to find a formula that works. Oh, quick, three quick passes. Larson cuts around Crooks. Audie grabs. Now she just needs some help to get the ball up front. Myers back with the basketball. Pulls up, 15-footer short. You could call that a pass. We'll call that a pass. We're going to call that a pass. and. Capacious right there, the recipient of the pass. So we'll give an assist and the two points. Garrigan back within eight. Nice move. Oh, and it goes off Crooks' hand. Oh, for a moment, loose ball. Timeout. I believe. Yes, timeout, Newell Fonda. It looked like Coach Jungers called timeout. All right, so Newell Fonda. North Central, Northwest, Northwest Central Iowa. Bishop Garrigan from Algona. Northwest, North Central, Kasuth County is where Algona is. And then a little bit to the west, Newell Fonda of Algona. About 145 and 138. You just got to take different routes to get here. Both of these teams, especially Newell Fonda, knows the way to Des Moines. Garrigan uh, made the trip we mentioned earlier to West Des Moines earlier. They treated that trip to play Valley like a trip to state. They had a hotel, they focused, and they wanted that competition. Very rarely do you see a 1A, 5A matchup, especially so late in the year, but Valley needed games and Garrigan needed games. Yeah, and, and Coach Schwab just started reaching out to CIML teams, knowing that they were looking for games and he reached out to pretty much everybody, and Joe Segrist at Valley said, yeah, come on, we'll, we'll play you. And so they came down, as you had mentioned, probably on the coldest day of the year, about 22 below. Oh, the drive by Kaylin Myers. 
She's warmed up now. Back within five, 33-27 here in the third. You know, and Myers is one that has some experience, third trip in four years here to the state tournament. So she is somebody that could be that calming presence on the floor. Foul is before the shot. And Abby Capacious is whistled. Look at that look by Myers. Headed to Grandview, going to go into the physical therapy area, kinesiology. A lot of times you hear those uh, players who maybe had knee injuries that go into that field because they've gotten an up-close look at the medical industry. <laughs> nice shot in the lane. There you go, Macy Seavers with the bucket. She's big time. And that's just the rotation of the offense and cutting down the middle of the lane. Crooks catches and will get two. That's a very common look for Audie Crooks, but you got to remember this, Laura. Audie Crooks is not just a basketball player. She plays trumpet. She sings alto two. She likes to sing gospel, R&B. You want to guess the name of the group that she's in at Garrigan? I'm, I'm waiting for you to tell me because I think you wanted her to sing you a little song. I did. During Viva, interviews. Viva, Viva Voce. She goes, it just means the jazz choir. It's nothing major. She said, she was like not impressed by the name or something. My like, that's still cool. But she likes to sing. I said, we're going to see you on The Voice or something. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not that good. But she does like to do it. Crooks missed that free throw. 35-28 is what the score is right now. Three short right there to collect. It was Legault who's back in after getting that contact lens situation worked out. Larson kicks to the corner. Look how quick they move the ball around. Oh my. Yeah. Good, good 15 foot from Lanny Hograve. You know, and, and we talked about it as a key, C4, and they do. They C4 players all the time. When somebody has the ball in their hand, they are looking at the floor. They're looking for teammates cutting. Coach Junker said one of the things we do well is we do a great job with ball movement on offense, and right there you can't get much better than that. That was picture perfect there. They kept moving it around the outside, got inside, drew the double team, wrap around pass to the outside. Crooks now with 12 and 13 points. She goes XX on the free throws. Good ball movement again, top of the key, three short. It's gonna go off of Newell Fonda, I think. No, they're gonna say it goes off Myers who was defending right there on the baseline. Now there's going to be a conversation. And it's, and it's going to go back to Garrigan. Garrigan almost expecting that trap to come, kind of trying to lull Garrigan in. Joyce, transition, runner, good. Got a little bump on the way down, and once she shook her defender, able to pull up and hit that mid-range jumper. Here come the Bears, back within five. Three minutes to go, third quarter, 37-32. Nice floater, high off the glass, no good. Walker's shot is again rebounded by Newell Fonda. Larson fouled. Again, just in awe of the ball movement. It doesn't stick at one spot for very long. It's like a hot potato. Get it, move it around, don't hang on to it, and see if you can find the open player. So what do you attribute that to? I mean, I know they practice that a lot, and it's, it's something, as you mentioned earlier, about uh, from the beginning. Uh, New Wolfonda basketball, this is what they do. But I mean, what can other coaches do in other programs to kind of replicate this? I mean, besides passing it for an entire two hours. I think it's just drilling it. You have to just have that mindset that you're not going to dribble a lot. You're not going to put it on the floor. You're not going to hold it and let it stall in one spot. And I, it's just practice, practice, practice. 
It's going to be a held ball. So we've gotten a little physical in there. That one really, that was, uh, that was set up right here. Watch the deflection. And then back. That was like we're back at the state wrestling I was just going to say, I think they got three back points right there. I'm not sure. And again, causing pressure. Larson, the putback. Boy, what a great job by Larson. Didn't even come down with it. Just timed her jump perfectly to get the putback. Up ahead, Crooks, dribble. Brought that ball down low though, Laura, but there didn't happen to be anybody there that time. She's now got 15. They just kind of backed off of her that time and allowed her to get that entry pass and make the move. Larson, pull back on Crooks. He missed Macy Walker, or Mary Walker, excuse me, down low on the baseline. Three, good, Newell Fonda, Maggie Walker. Both of her buckets are three. Crooks catches and scores. So now we're starting to go back and forth and scoring is starting to heat up on both sides. 111 was your over under on this game. I think you took the under, right? Or did you take the over? I think I took the over. Yeah. I think that was pretty smart. That was a smart, kind of thought we'd get there. But if we go at this pace, yeah, we're gonna get to that point. A little slow to get started, but now things are picking up. The shot by Legault was no good, and Garrigan has it. Look at that, five new Mustangs ready to check at the next whistle. You hear Coach Schwab say, move it. And they do, they need to move it. They're allowing this defense to settle in, come with a trap, they need to start looking. When there's a double team somewhere, start looking to attack. Larson gonna be called for the hold way out on the three-point line of Myers. <laughs> There's a look at Coach Schwab, who has been a head coach at Fitton Shellsburg, assisted at Jessup, and was a, has been the coach at Garrigan for 10 years now. He was a teacher, now he's a farmer. Sorry, Laura, that sometimes we start talking a little more. I asked him if he had any corn or soybeans yet to sell, and he says, you didn't tell me anything, Paul. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me on those uh, discussions, Laura. That's fine, I learn a little something every time I talk <laughs> with you guys. The three-point shot is gonna go. Initially, it looked like it was gonna be Berkey, but Newell Fonda got a hand in there right at the end. McKenna Seavers there, running out, is Jungers. 26.4 to go, third quarter. Back over. Capacious, now throwing it away. Joyce had no chance to grab that one. And that's just the nature of the beast. And you get a look right there at Paige Roberts who came in and literally leaned up against Audie Crooks on that last possession to try to play the front position and was leaning up against her. Well, when you got a couple of uh, extra bodies on the bench that can come in and do that, and they're not afraid of the big lights, you can do that. Take that chance. And before Seavers can get a shot off, she's fouled at 5.1 left on the clock. Four seconds, Seavers, three, two, the runner at the buzzer, won't go! New Newell Fonda is within striking distance, 43-36. Audie Crook, 17 points. She loves Tupac and Biggie. She's been a Biggie on the 
on the block here. Look at this one. Great footwork and a good job. And really, that's the first time that she hasn't had three players around her. But she goes up and gets it, has soft hands, able to grab it, and then rights herself, gets those shoulders square, goes right to the hoop. Audie's mother played at Garrigan. And I've been hearing about Audie Crooks a couple of different ways. Uh, Grandpa Frank has been telling Will, his best friend Will, or a good friend Will. Will says hi, by the way, to Grandpa Frank. Frank's been talking about Audie for years, and a lot of people in Algona knew about Audie Crooks for a number of years, Laura. Uh, even when Garrigan was here a couple of years ago, before Audie was even a freshman, the, the, the word around was Garrigan, hey, we've got this girl coming. She's lived up to the hype. She has, and, and she's just going to continue to get better. I mean, when we talked to Coach Schwab, he said, you know, this year she's not just a right-handed, right-sided block player. We have been able to get her to develop, and she wants to learn and she wants to work. And you had mentioned it the day after the tournament game a year ago. She was back in the gym working. And so she just wants to get better each and every day and get stronger. And she knows that this team is going to continue to grow and be good. The smart Alex that I am. Audie, which question are you more tired of? Where are you going for college, or do you want to beat Newell Fonda in the championship game again? Both, but <laughs> I, I'm more tired about Newell Fonda. So, because the questions are going to come. That girl has basically any pick she wants for college in the United States. They're all going to know where Algona, Iowa is. But Audie has said she's going to commit make a verbal before she plays one game as a junior. So that means just a few months. They yeah. get around her for that shot. Sometime this uh, summer or into the fall, she may make a decision and may not, maybe not. Maybe she'll decide that there's too many to choose from and she wants to take a little bit more time. Let's take a look at that one again here as Joyce goes and is fouled. And that's Kira Jungers, and I think she just picked up foul number four. Or three. Thought she had three before, so there had been a change made on the number of fouls for Jungers. No, they just They did put up four, yep. okay. Because I noticed there was only a one substitution the last time she had a foul, and I was like, oh, that's because she now has three, so. So Garrigan won the third quarter 16-10. Newell Fonda watches as Garrigan scores again. So they've got this to a, a manageable point where they're only down five. And they just need to get a couple of stops. No rush, good look, good three for Newell Fonda. And that three was McKenna Sievers. And a turnover as they tried again to go into Crooks. She's denied. And then just led her a little bit too far and didn't have the great positioning. I think rushed that a little bit too much, but it's the right idea. You got to get the ball inside to Crooks. Nice. Nice, nice. Bailey Seavers, two more. The dribble drive along the baseline, and then again, a cut from the top. And they just knew that somebody was going to be there if they made that pass. Crooks, the rebound off the missed three, goes up. Now with 19. Back to eight. Dribble kick. Seavers, Seavers. It doesn't matter what year you are, you pass the basketball well to, to be on the floor for Newell Fonda. And I think that starts down at the lower levels as well. They run the same system with their younger kids. And so by the time they get here to this level, they, they know the off offense inside and out. So last year, the state softball tournament, Newell Fonda was in that. And getting fouled on her way to the basket is Bailey Seavers. 
a lot of these girls, again, multi-sport athletes like we have in, in many other of these teams. And they go out in the first round last year uh, in Fort Dodge at the state softball tournament. Dick Jungers used to coach softball, but now his assistant, Courtney Darrow, is the head softball coach. And there's a look at Courtney. Just put her mask back up. So again, you have to share the athletes. And you know, you see, uh, when you go to softball and basketball enough with Newell Fonda, you always kind of see the same faces because you see them at basketball, and then you see them at state softball. Well, like you said, you share the athletes, but you also share the students. You share them with the vocal music department and the band and a lot of other extracurricular activities. So they just aren't athletes. They're doing a lot of other things, as you had mentioned, with Crooks being in choir and show choir. And I, all these young ladies do a, wear a lot of different hats throughout the year. Will Fonda by nine. I think Kingsley Pearson had a girl miss practice last week because she was at a speech competition. That's right. So again, there's always something going on in the winter. The great putback, Maggie Walker. Back to an 11 point lead as the Golden Bears had made a run and Newell Fonda has kind of gone on a little one of their own. Bishop Garrigan had gotten it back to where you felt like they were within one stop of really making this game interesting. But then Newell Fonda turns up the defensive pressure again, gets a couple of steals and extends that lead. Free throw is made by Joyce. Ellsbecker in, Berkey out. Second free throw is good. Well, if you're Garrigan, you take this opportunity when the clock is stopped to cut into this lead. The biggest lead of the game Newell Fonda had was 15 with a couple of minutes left in the second quarter. Let's see if they've got another run in them in the final 12. This is the 1A championship on statewide Iowa PBS. It's the biggest day of my life. So I walked away from all of it. Now I'm gonna be part of this country. My hard work has allowed us to have all these nice things. There's not for sure future in it. But it's the best decision that I've ever made. Coming to Iowa PBS, March 19th. In 1939, millions of our grandparents went to war. Your grandfather would have been standing upon the indefatigable witnessing history. Now four Hollywood stars are exploring their family's extraordinary World War II stories. Gosh, why didn't I know this? How extraordinary history is particularly this link of grandchildren and grandparents. My grandparents wore. Coming to Iowa PBS April 4th. The Garrigan fans dancing and enjoying their times. Coach Brandon Schwab now has over 200 career wins. Dick Jungers over 400 career wins. So lots of games between the two. Not necessarily against each other, but I sure would love to see this uh, game happen on a regular basis in the uh, regular season. We'll see if they do it again next year. Three on the way. No. Larson the rebound. Tipped away by Garrigan. And that was Kalen Myers. Drive to the distance. Myers, no good. Crooks collects and returns. A great job by Myers to get the steal and get all the way to the rim. And that's one of the things. You get the shot up there, and if you miss, you know that Crooks is right there and can pull the rebound. Whistle way out front. It's 
going to be on Joyce. Joyce and Myers both fouled out last year in that title game, and that's kind of when that game really turned. They didn't really have the experienced ball handler to bring the ball up against the pressure a year ago after they fouled out. Back into the game is Bailey Seavers. Going out for Garrigan is Abby Capacious. A lot of times this 1A championship game has always been a good one, whether it was Newell Fonda against Springville or Newell Fonda against Bishop Garrigan or... Yeah, they always have been very, very competitive. Newell Fonda now going into a little bit of a stall game. A lot of time left on the clock to go into oh. this. Trying to go to Larson, but Crooks got a hand in the passing lane. And then a steal, nope, a foul. Thought for a moment Seavers was gonna be able to get that. There's a good look at those blue uniforms the Mustangs wear. Brand new ones, you want to excite a girl or a guy. New uniforms always are a big hit. That's always a, a motivator to have those new uniforms. Girls were excited about the brand that they were. Kaylin Myers, two points tonight. Now three. Myers had nine rebounds against Springville and 10 points against Xyra EHK yesterday. She's starting to come on strong here. She's had a few flashes here in the second half to help them cut into this lead. Lead is five again. Newell Fonda looks like they're gonna do the same thing again. I said still a lot of time to be going into the stall game when it's not something that you normally do. Yeah, how many times have you seen that? Yeah, it's a, it, it sometimes backfires. Right now they seem to be very well versed in how to run it. Well, there are some teams that just aren't used to passing the ball like that. This one I wouldn't think is an issue for them as they get a foul on Garrigan. And I think that was uh, Reese Rosenmeyer. Well, Audie Crooks has a double-double, 21 points, 10 rebounds. Bailey Seavers, the only one with 12 points. I think she's the only Newell Fonda player with double digits. That's right, it's Bailey Seavers. So at the line, though, is Macy Seavers. So just a reminder, when you're filling out your Newell Fonda genealogy tree, Macy and McKenna are sisters, but Bailey is a distant, distant, distant cousin. Their grandfathers were cousins, so let me know which one that works out. Mary and Maggie Walker are sisters. The free throw is good. There's just always, you would think we'd have that family tree published. Well, I was going to say, is that something you can only buy in Newell Fonda? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that should be a pledge premium. We're going to put the genealogy together of all the girls that played in the tournament. We do thank you for your continued support of Iowa PBS as we continue to bring the live coverage of the championships of soccer and volleyball and softball and basketball statewide to all counties. We're streaming again this year on the website and on the... PBS app and you've already become a member and you like Passport, you've, you already know the, the great things about all the programming available there. Streaming is the new thing. We're in the mix right there. An opportunity to cash in on the missed free throw and they give up the offensive rebound and now Noel Fonda can go into the stall game again. And getting into the air was capacious. 
Before I forget, I would be remiss if I did not say thank you to the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union for all their help in getting our coverage together, especially Jason Esslinger. Keeps us informed and well-versed and answers all the ridiculous questions. And trust me, Laura, you should know this by now. I'm known for a lot of them. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. You're, you're inquisitive. That's, uh, but it helps us all. That's one word that Jason uses to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Jason does great work and uh, spends a lot of long hours putting together the program and the information on every team because everybody's qualifying at a different time. So he's continually working weeks before the tournament starts. Pressure causes another turnover in front of the Newell Fonda bench. And sometimes he's trying to manage another sport because bowling usually happens at about the exact same time. And so you're trying to put programs together because you have eight qualifiers in five classes. And so it's the first Saturday, then it's Tuesday, Wednesday. So it kind of goes in waves, but it is still a lot to put together. And, you know, he puts together information. There's others in the office that put together logistics of, okay, you're going to, the bus parks here and the drop off here, your warm up is then. And, you know, these are the colors. These are the things you can, I mean, there's just so much that goes into putting on these tournaments. And let's be frank, Gene Berger pushed hard to get this tournament this year with fans. Let's go back, Laura, to when we did softball back in, in July. There wasn't anybody playing sports then. And there we were. We were the last to have championships in basketball and the first to be back in softball, baseball. And here we are with a statewide tournament with fans in the stands. Yeah, the eyes of the country were on Iowa when uh, we were able to bring back baseball and softball and pulled off a successful state softball tournament. And uh, everything has just continued. They showed that they can do it responsibly and have distancing and make sure that everybody is safe and they were able to get us to this point and have you can hear the fans great crowds to watch these young women play for a state title now newell find it putting on a little bit of extra pressure caused a couple of turnovers and now we have a timeout bishop garrigan the lead is Expanded up to 13, 157 to play here in the 1A championship. We're the Mestrix, and we have a five-year-old son named Landon. Landon chose PBS more than us choosing it for him. PBS had a special on Pearl Harbor, and once he started watching the show about the Arizona, he completely became fascinated. Everything that he learns from the show, he continues to teach others about it as well. And then his Christmas wish was to meet Donald Stratton, one of the survivors from the Arizona. That's Donald Stratton, and that's me. He got to meet his hero, finally face-to-face -face in person in Washington, D.C. So good to see you, buddy. How you been? It kind of touches my heart to, to know that he cares and has that much passion about that. This is for you. Thank you, big guy. <laughs> I look at everything that Landon has learned from PBS, and it's immeasurable. Everybody is big enough to do something. He is living proof of the effect that PBS has had on his life. Fans, young and old, in the arena. Can't go wrong with the dancing baby, Laura. Not at all, and uh, still up and cheering at this hour. So are you, by the way. <laughs> I am up and cheering. You got that right. 59-46, <laughs> Newell Fonda. And a foul. And Kalen Myers will get a chance. Both teams in the bonus. 10 team fouls for Garrigan, 18 fouls for Newell Fonda. So Bailey Sievers with 12, Macy Sievers with 12, Maggie Walker eight, Ella Larson with five. Free throw good from Kaylin Myers, who now has five points of her own. She too was one of those that had a hard time watching. Could only watch the first three quarters of last year's championship game. And right now it might be kind of the same. And 
it's great memories later. It's just initially it hurts. Yeah, you're right. It hurts and it stings for a while. And you know, you can take some of the lessons that you learn from these types of games. And she, as you had mentioned, going on to play at Grandview. And maybe there's some things that she will take away from these last two state championship games that she can use to help elevate her game at Grandview. A couple of times tonight, Laura, we showed how Newell Fondo like, would double front and back defense on Audie Crooks. Audie still has 21 points. What is, what was the biggest factor for Newell Fondo's defense? Well, I think that they, even though they gave her the 21 points, she could have had a lot more, but they had the double team front and back, and then they had somebody else coming in from behind to try to stop that lob pass. And so they really made it difficult for her to get any touches. And then on the perimeter, just didn't get shots to fall. They couldn't work the ball inside out and so they could get out and play a little extra hard on the perimeter on those outside shooters. And they would just step in front of long passes like that. Their anticipation is really good. And, and they do, they're quick, they have speed, they understand the game, and they're just in constant motion. So if you're always moving, you're bound to be in the right spot. We are approaching the near point total of the first game, but the score flipped from earlier this year. Newell Fonda now with 63 points, Bishop Garrigan with 48. That pressure has just been tough. We had a camera angle there just a minute ago from behind that shows on the floor. And it, you just see, all you see are arms, elbows, hands, knees in a blue or white jersey when you're playing Newell Fonda. It, it's just a gauntlet that Molly Joyce is trying to get through. Can't convert Crooks there <laughs> to pull the rebound. And I'm not sure who she had draped on her arm. I think it was Paige Roberts and uh, just got under the arm. And Crooks now with 22. Newell Fonda, which makes a week of it down here. They try to have some activities and uh, they're gonna probably have a trophy activity as Garrigan calls timeout here, down 13. These are the conversations that are tough for coaches. You gotta just not give up, even though the results of the game you want to make sure that you, you get, at this point, your seniors that have not seen a whole lot of floor time, get them in the game. You want to still coach them up. So you want to be as positive as you can as a coach and talk them through situations and what they need to do when they're in the ball game. So there's some younger students and Coach Jungers is the PK-8 principal. I'm not sure if he's doing this as a recruiting thing or it's just good school spirit. He brings the girls. They have pep rallies in the school for the elementary schools. Earlier this year, they had a, a, a rally and uh, some of the younger fans, second grade fan, went up to the Newell Fonda varsity girls and just said, we are so proud of you and good luck at state. And the bonds, I mean, there's a difference between recruiting and marketing. And I think you gotta, the program at Newell Fonda, I believe does both, good marketing and good recruiting. It lets everybody, everybody in that community knows how strong they are in girls basketball, boys basketball. And it's just a way of life, but it's also, yes, you might not be in the starting five, but how many girls did you say earlier tonight had played? 12? Well, halftime was 12. Yeah, and so you're gonna, gonna get a four. chance to play. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's just not the younger kids looking up to the kids that are playing right now in high school. But it's the freshmen when they come into this program at the high school, the seniors take them under their wing and help them understand what the program's all about and, and make sure that it just keeps rolling and it's a well-oiled machine and that's exactly what it is. Crooks, two more and then a whistle out front as we're under a minute now. 
Molly Joyce picks up the foul. That is her fourth. And going to the line to shoot to Macy Seavers, who has now had a pretty good fourth quarter as she's up to 16 points. Thanks to the great camera work of the Iowa PBS crew as uh, they have been working long hours to get you the action from all corners. And another steal by Newell Fonda. And in there was Seavers again. Macy's only a junior. She wants to play basketball in college. She's played basketball at the state tournament a lot and had a lot of success. So has her teammates. Well, and you look up and down this lineup, Bailey Seavers a senior, Maggie Walker a senior, Ella Larson a senior, El Ellie Legault a senior. So they're gonna lose some significant players off of this team, but as we have seen, he has a lot of depth, Coach Jungers does, and he plays a lot of players. Newell Fonda goes back to back, a little less drama, but the same result. They are state champions in basketball. here in the second half, but it was close and Garrigan gave them a battle. The whole game, it is hard to beat a team twice in a year in the same season. Well, they really did give a great effort, Bishop Garrigan did in the second half and got it to within striking distance. And they were just one play, one stop, one bucket away from really making it a one possession game. They got it to within five and just couldn't get that one play. It's, it's now time to recognize the Girls State Basketball Championship presented by Iowa Farm Bureau Class 1A All-Tournament Team. Presenting the awards is Craig Hill, president of the Iowa Farm Bureau. Joining him are Governor Kim Reynolds and members of the IGH SAU Board of Directors Russ Adams, Travis Fleshner, Ron Fodness, and Jim Beamer. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your Class 1A All-Tournament Team members. From Newell Fonda, Bailey Seavers. From Bishop Garrigan, Molly Joyce. From Exira Elkhorn Kimbleton, Quinn Grubbs. From Montezuma, Elise Bolton. From Bishop Garrigan, Audie Crooks. and the captain of the 2021 Class 1A All-Tournament Team from Newell Fonda, Macy Seavers. So as the captain gets her solo shot and then they'll join together for a group photo. That's a, again, a great collection of basketball players that played their hearts out at the tournament this year and uh, I'd another, start a, I'd another start a team with those five. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 
I'd take, you know, and I was just looking at, you know, Macy Seavers is going to Dort and Mary Walker's going to Dort as well. Please help us recognize the 2021 Class 1A runner-up, the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears and head coach Brandon Schwab. Fans, let's hear it for your 2021 Class 1A champion, the new Fonda Mustangs and head coach Dick Jungers. New Fonda, their fourth title, third in a row. It has been a great run for this squad. And Laura, we could just go ahead and put our notes away and it could easily be Bishop Garrigan and New Fonda again next year. And hanging on to these notes for next year. And uh, to watch these trophy celebrations it never gets old you have to love it the excitement that surrounds the team and the fans and the town it uh, is what this tournament's all about great job Laura Leonard you are fantastic you too it's been great to have loved working with you and love seeing the pink jacket again <laughs> well that's that's one and we also have one more thing to do and that is a tradition that we have started and we continue again this year. We're going to show you some highlights from out the tournament. What other song do you pick but one singular sensation from all of us here at Iowa PBS. Congratulations to all five champions. The most recent, Newell Fonda. Thank you for making us a part of your viewing experience. And congratulations to all the teams and players. Our next championship is soccer. We'll see you then. Every move that she makes One smile and suddenly nobody else will do You know you'll never be lonely with you No one Only in her presence and you can't forget the rest For the girl is second best to non -son. Ooh, sa, give her your attention. Do I really have to mention she's the one? One singular sensation, every little step she takes. Funding provided by You work hard to feed them well. That's why at Fairway, we're committed to our foundation of personalized service while treating our customers like family and valuing our employees. Fairway Meat and Grocery, that's what we're all about. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Small businesses are the backbone of Iowa's communities, and they are backed by Iowa banks. With advice, loans, and financial services, banks across Iowa are committed to showing small businesses the way to a stronger tomorrow. Learn more at iowabankers.com.